Romans 8, 28, we're going to go there and we'll pray over the word this morning and, and I'll read the scripture. But the scripture says this in Romans 8, 28, and we all quote this, but let's read it together. Amen. Let's stand and read the scripture together. You know, we're, that's the King James Version we have. You can look on the screen up there. We want to read the scripture together because we quote it so much and we use it so much. But today you're going to get a greater revelation of what it really means. Amen. God's going to give you a greater revelation. Let's read it together. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Give God thanks for his word this morning. You may be seated. Amen. And I pray over the word as we get into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for revelation. This is a topic, God, that's so important. And it's so important that we have a revelation of this topic, God, and of this word that you have given us this morning in Romans 8 and 28. Give us revelation. Help us to understand it. Help us to grow from it. And help us apply it to our lives. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we know that all things, I quote it a lot, and I heard some of you quote a lot, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. I want to break this scripture down just a little bit for you. And we want to break it down so we can have a better understanding. But as we read this scripture, it tells us that God works all things out for those who love him. This is the first assurance of, of these scriptures here of deliverance that, that, God, that God was given uh, the Apostle Paul here in the Word of God. This is a comforting declaration to know that all things that go on in our life, all things, not some things, but all things work together for the good. Now, little question that's going through your mind now, how can everything work together for our good? Well, you will have an understanding of that, hopefully, by the time we leave here today. But all things work together for our good. Whether it's bad or whether it's good, whether it's bad things or good things, God, as a believer, and those who love God, and those who believe God, God says in his word, this is a promise, an assurance from God, that he will work all things out for the good of those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Let me take some time to explain this scripture. The word all things, let's start with that first. It said God works all things. All things are well beyond the great events of this world. God controls the events of this world, but he controls much more. God, he rules over all things, all the events and happenings that occur over our life of the believer. He works all things out for good because you are his children. In other words, he works all things out. God is in control of all things that happens in your life as a believer. It may not seem like it. You may say, God, I'm going through a little bit right here. I, I, I just had this trial. How can God be in control of that? But God is. You as a believer, God is in control of everything that happens in your life. Amen. Amen. Whether it's good or bad, God is in control of that. You notice I said for those who believe, right? Those who believe in those who are called according to his purpose. But God is in control of it. Like every single event that happens in your life, God is in control of that. I mean, I, I, I got joy just to know that even when I don't understand, Lord, God is still in control. Amen. Amen. Even when I can't figure it out in my own mind, God is still in control, John. Every event that happens in my life as a believer, as long as I love God and, I, and I'm living a life just holy before God, God says he will work all things out for my good. In other words, he's in control. He's in control, McGill, of everything, every event that happens in my life. You know what? The devil meant for good, God was bad, but God would turn around for the good. Amen. When the devil attacks us, he, he meant it for bad, but God would get involved in the circumstances in your life, and he would turn it around for the good. So the word says all things. The next word, he says, and we know that all things work together. So let's look at that word, works together. I love that. I'm going to tell you what it means. Work together. Show you how God works. Work together means to create and eliminate. God has a right to create some things in your life, and he has a right to eliminate some things in your life. Why? Because he's working it out for your good. What it means working together? It means to place and to replace. God can place some things in your life, and he can replace some things in your life. Why? Because he's working it out for your good. This word work together means to connect and to group. God can connect you and he can group you. He has a right to shape you and do whatever he wants to do in your life because he's working these things out in your life. He's working all these events that take place in your life. God, what working together means, it means to interrelate and it means to intermingle. 
God has a right to do that. He shapes and he forges. He presses and he stretches us. He has a right to do that. He moves and he, and he operates. He, he controls and he guides. He arranges and he influences. God, in other words, by working together, means God can just reshape some things and move some things and replace some things and, 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 and just take some influence in our life. God can do that because he's working all things out for our good. See, so half the time, we don't understand what God is doing anyway. Our, our job is to pray. God, I don't, I don't understand what you're doing, but I'm going to pray about this. I don't understand how this is working together for my good, but the Word of God said you're working out for my good. So the Word of God means you're working out. It means that you can move some things, eliminate some things, reshape some things, replace some things. God, you can influence some things. You can group some things. You can intermingle some things. Whatever you're doing in the events in my life, God, you're in control. And I trust that you're working it out for my good. Whatever it is, Lord, he's working it out for our good. We don't understand it sometimes in our natural minds, you know. We don't understand because sometimes we have that kind of thinking sometimes. We don't understand it. And sometimes we try to figure out God. You can't figure out God. Just trust that God is in control of it. Just trust that he is in control of the situation. So he's working it out together. And that word working out together, it means that all things are continually working together for our good. Not just one time, but every event, God is continually working it out for your good. All things working out for your good. God is in control of your life. As a Christian, as a believer, God is in control of your life. You say, well, well Pastor, I made a mistake. God is even in control. He's still in control of your life. He'll take that mistake and that event and he'll shape it and remold it and replace it and rearrange it. Whatever he has to do, but he's going to work it out in the end. For your good. Look, somebody say, God is good and give God some praise. But God is awesome. God is awesome and He is good. All I got to do is trust Him, saying that He's worth I don't have to understand. Look, somebody say, I don't have to understand it. I just have to trust that God is working it out for my good. I had some failures in my life, but I didn't understand it, but God was working it out for my good. There's some things I didn't understand that, that, that maybe I didn't do as well, but God was still working it out for my good. Sometimes you may have applied for a job. You didn't get the job you wanted, but God was working it out for your good. He was replacing it and reorganizing. He was doing some things in your life that you didn't even see, but God is working it out for your good. And then it says here, the good. I like that part. The word good means ultimate good. We cannot see the future. We can't see the future. We cannot take a single event and see the, 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 the line of ramification that runs from it. We cannot see ahead, but God can. Because he sees the good, and he's working out for the good. We don't know. In other words, we don't know. We can't see how it's going to turn out, Lord, for our good. But God sees the future. He sees the future. I remember... I go back and just give an example how I got to this point. I don't know how I got to this point, but I look back over my life and I see how God worked things out for my good. I went through some, some trials and I went through some tribulations and, and I didn't understand it at the, at the time. I didn't understand what God was doing, but God was reshaping it. I went through some disappointments and some hurts, McGill. I didn't understand it, but God was reshaping it and he was replacing it and he was reorganizing it and he was taking control of the situation. And all of a sudden I end up back in Raleigh and, and, and starting a church. And then I look back and say, wow, now I can see how God reorganized some things, reshaped some things. He took some hurts to push me for some things. And God took all of that and he mingled it all together. He matched it all together and he saw my future and he worked it out for my good. So I stand before you this morning and he worked it out for my good. Eight years ago, I didn't understand what he was doing, but he was working out for my good. Eight years ago, I didn't see myself standing here before you, but he was working out for my good. Eight years ago, or five years ago, or three years ago, you didn't see yourself here in Mr. Pope Ministry. But somehow God worked some things out. Somehow he, he, he just reshaped some things and reorganized some things. Sometimes he let you go through some failures in life. Sometimes he, let, he just got some things happen in your life, and it moved you, and it direct you, and you don't know what was going on, and you just say, God, for this. Amen. So here you sit. That message of hope ministry. All things work together. Some of you don't even understand how you got here. But God says all things work together for your good. You don't even know how you got to the city. But all things work together for your good. Look somebody say God is good and he will work together for your good. You know, but God is good. And then it's, but, but I don't want to get confused because there's a limitation on this promise here. He says that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called.
according to his purpose. So let's not be deceived in this thing. God works things out together for those who love him and those who obey him. God said, I'll work it out for your good. If we're not saved, God don't have to work it out for good. He's not going to work it out for good if, we're not, if we don't love God and if we don't obey God. But he said, for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. If you saved and you sanctified and you see this morning, you are called. God has called you. He has justified you. And he will glorify you. You are the called out ones, is what they say. If you sit here today and a believer of Jesus Christ, you've been called. And if you love him, you love God. You trust God. God said, if you love me, Trish, and you trust me, whatever you're going through, I'm going to work it out. Amen. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I lost a loved one. You don't understand how hurt. God said, I'm working that out too. Amen. For your good. See, we don't have to understand it. We just have to realize that God is in control. Amen. And we have to realize that he's working all things out for our good. So there's a limitation. We've got to love God. And we've got to be the ones that are called out. And I believe you are the one this morning. Amen. I believe you are the called out ones. I believe you are the ones that God is working out. You don't understand what's going on, but God is working it out for your good. He's working out for your good. I, I had, during my career, before I retired, during my career, I, I had jobs I applied for and didn't get and I didn't understand. But that wasn't the job God had for me. He allowed me to go through that faith so that he can open up another door for me. See, God sees the future. That's the thing. We can't see the future, but with God, God doesn't make mistakes, first of all. Amen. So in order to get you, God is like a GPS system. Sometimes he just take you to this street. Then you got to turn right on this street. Then you got to turn left on this street. See, we don't understand the process of God working things out for our good. We sometimes, we, we have a problem with God's process. Because, see, the process doesn't match up with our own natural thinking. But a GPS system may take you a route that you ain't like, why the world is it taking me this way? But see, the GPS system sometimes is taking you through the safest route. There's more with less traffic sometimes, you know? You know, so God is like that. We can't figure out the roles he's going to take, the roles that he's going to turn. God, I thought you were taking me this way. Why are we taking the right turn here? God is working it out for you good. Because he sees the future. He sees everything that's going to happen in your life. We're going to talk to him that God is sovereign. Amen. He knows everything. Amen. He doesn't miss nothing. He knows everything. He knows where you're going to be tomorrow. He knew that you would be here today. God knows it all. He even knows what's going to happen to you a month from now. Two months from now. We can't even see it. But God knows. Amen. So I have to trust the one who can see my tomorrow. Because, see, I have to live in today and just have faith for tomorrow. I can't see what's happening tomorrow. I just have to have faith and trust God for tomorrow. And since God can see tomorrow and he knows all things, God be my GPS. I don't understand which route you're taking me, but be my GPS. I don't understand why this has happened, but be my GPS. I don't understand the failure that happened in my life. But God, you can see the future and you know all things because God is sovereign. He is sovereign. Look somebody say, he's working it out. Yeah. I want to cover a couple of scriptures. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. God will deliver God will be the God is always delivering us from things and from struggles of this life. But God made some promises through us through these following scriptures that I want to cover. Because we're going to talk about after these scriptures the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. I want to go to a couple of scriptures that, that we know and we read and, and, and how God has promised us that he's working things out for our good. Look what he says here regarding temptation, even in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Look what God says. For they have no temptation taking you but such as what? Common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way for you to escape that you may be what? Able to bear it. Now keep in mind as we read that scripture, God does not tempt anyone. James makes that clear in James 1 and 13. God cannot be tempted, neither does he tempt anyone. But what God does, he's working things out for your good. What he does is he makes a way for you to escape temptation. He makes a way for you, for you to escape. He makes a way for you to overcome. He makes a way for you because he's working it out for your good. But we have to love God and we have to obey God. That when God opens a door, we'll take that door to flee the temptations that come in our life. But that's God. 
He's working it out. We're going to be tempted in this life. But God has already worked it out in your faith. He's already working some things out. Let's look at uh, Psalms 34 and 19. Psalms 34 and 19. We, we know this scripture. We read it a lot. It says, wow, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, what? Deliver him out of them all. Guess what? He's working things out for your good. He said, he said here that many are our afflictions and deserve. But God here will deliver you out of them all. The Lord doesn't promise a trouble-free life. We know that. That's what the scripture just says. He doesn't promise a trouble-free a trouble life. Sometimes God does, not, God does not deliver us from the circumstances. He does not deliver us or, or by changing, in other words, our circumstances. Sometimes God doesn't deliver us by changing our circumstances. But he helps us to get through. Because he's even in that, he's working things out for our good. God is good. Even at some point, deliverance, this is a tough one here, even at some point, deliverance from our struggles may come through death. I know y'all ain't going to shout on that one, but hallelujah, I'll shout anyway for you. Praise God. Even deliverance sometimes may come through death. The apostles, God delivered them from time after time, and there was a time that God had to deliver them from this world through their death. Thank God that we can't lose either way. We can't lose either way, McGill. Even in our death, because the Bible says, what? To live is Christ. And to what? Die is gain. So sometimes God even deliver people through death. I watched my mom and she suffered on her deathbed. And we had prayed many times. And for many times, God healed her. And, 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 and he healed her time after time after time. But there was a time we prayed that God didn't heal her. Guess what he did? He delivered her from the sufferings of this world through death. Because, see... Now, she's in the glory of God. Yeah. She's been delivered and set free yeah. from the trials and the troubles of this world. But either way, God is working it out. Yeah. However he works it out, he's working it out. He, he's working out. He's involved in your situation. He, he, he's in control of what you're going through. See, see, what makes it tough on us sometimes is we like to be in control of our own situation. But we have to trust God when we can't control the events that's taking place in your life. You can't control sometimes the sickness that come on your body. You can't control the trial. You can't control the situation where you got laid off. You can't control some things that happens in your life. But God is still in control. And we just have to trust him. In Isaiah 41 and 10, it says this. Isaiah 41 and 10. He says, feel not. Feel thou not, for I am with you. Look, somebody say, he's working it out. Feel, feel not, uh, thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thou God. The word says, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. We don't have to fear anything. We can be assured that God is going to help us. Whatever it is, he's working it out in our life. Just remember that God is working out in our life. And Isaiah 43 and 2, let's go to that scripture. Another a, a scripture that we read a lot. And it says here in Isaiah 43 and 2, When thou pass it through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And I recall in, in, in Isaiah 43 and 1, it says, I have redeemed you and called you by name. You are mine. So God said, you are mine when you go through. In other words, I'll be there with you. Why? Because I'm working it out for your good. You may not understand it, but I'm working it out for your good. You may not know what's going on, and you just, you just know that you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a tense moment in your life, but God is saying, I'm working this out for you. Just trust me. Look somebody say, just trust me. 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 We, got, we got to trust God Amen. when he's working things out. But see, God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Jacob said, all things are against me. But, but, but Paul got the revelation. We said, all things work together for my good. Because you know, Paul understood the sovereignty of God when he quoted this scripture. When God gave him this revelation, he understood the sovereignty of of God. Because God is sovereign. God is in control. He is the highest ranking. There's no one ranks above God. God is God. And he's on the throne. And he has a right to do what pleases him. Because he's God. He has a right to, to orchestrate our life the way he wants to. Why? 
because he is God. We went through some trials in life, but look at you now. God brought you through. Amen. You can look back on your life and say, man, I went through some stuff in my life, but look at me now. Amen. Look what God has done. Amen. Look what God delivered me from. Amen. Look what God brought me through. There's some people that were in my life that's not in my life now, but look what God has done. Amen. God has reestablished my life. God has given me another chance. God has, he has, he has replaced some things in my life, and God has removed some things in my life. Well, he's working it out. Sometimes I can't explain it, so I have to pray for you. I can't explain it to you, but all I can tell you is he's working it out. Well, all I can tell you is just keep having faith. Just keep trusting him. Whatever is happening, he's working it out in your life. So I said, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I failed. That's okay. God said, get up. Confess your sins. Keep on walking. He's working that out too. Hallelujah. Even if you fail and you mess up, God said, you're still mine. Yes. And I still love you. And I'm working that out in your life too. Whatever it is, I'm working that out. The failures in your life, I'm working that out in your life too. But let's talk about the sovereignty of God in just a minute here. For the next 15 minutes. I want to go back to, to Thursday night. And, 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 and in Revelation, the first chapter, verse 8, we talked about this scripture on Thursday night. And they sung the song. I was glad they sung that song this morning because, because my, it was lining up with my message. It says here, the sovereignty of God. And Paul understood the sovereignty of God. What is that? All things work together for my good. We know the story of Paul. He was beaten, stoned, and he was left for dead. But he got the revelation that all things work together for my good. He was persecuted. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a viper that should have died. But he did because he understood that all things work together for my good. Because he loved God. Because he was called according to God's purpose. So he went through those trials, but he understood the sovereignty of God. Let's say the scripture. Jesus said here, the word of God said here to John, I am Alpha and what? Omega. This is awesome here. Which means the beginning and the ending, says the Lord. Which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty God. He is Alpha and Omega, says the first and the last. He's the beginning and the ending. He began all things and he shall end all things. Why? Because he is God. There's no higher ranking being than God. There's no higher ranking angelic host. God is right. God is God. And he doesn't have to answer to nobody. Nobody does he have to answer for why? Because he's sovereign. And he's in control. He can do whatever he wants to do that pleases him. Because he is God. And he is in control. God. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. He's eternal. He's, he's, he's unchangeable. He's Jehovah. He is God. Paul had a revelation of the sovereignty of God. God. You know, he got the revelation. He got the revelation. And Hebrews 13 and 5, look what it says. He got the revelation. Here it says, and, and, and for God has said, I would never leave thee nor forsake thee. Why? Because he's sovereign. I'm going to explain it just a few minutes. Because he is sovereign. God would never leave thee nor forsake thee. What is the sovereignty of God? Let's talk about it. What is the sovereignty of God? The sovereignty of God. The ability of God to exercise his holy will and supremacy. God is supreme. The most high God of heaven and earth has unlimited, unlimited power to do what he has resolved. He is absolute independent. God does what? As he pleases. He does what as he pleases and none can deter nor hinder him. God is sovereign. That's what that means. He's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do. Because he is God. I don't understand why I'm going through God, but you are sovereign. You can do what? You want to do because you're God. You're sovereign. Jesus prayed, God, take this cup away from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. Why? Because you're sovereign. You are God, and you can do whatever you please. God, I don't understand this. This is a major thing I'm going through, but you know what? You're God. You know what's best for me anyway. Hallelujah. Some of you went through some bad relationships and God removed you from them. He, he worked some things out. That relationship wasn't good for you anyway. God was working some things out in your life even back then. But now you can look back on your life and you can see that God was in the midst of your life. And he was working things out for your good. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Do I this? 
as their forces, and it, it, it speaks of his sovereignty, that God is absolute. Look what it says in Isaiah 46, 9, 10. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Ooh, hallelujah. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times of the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. What is the scripture saying? The sovereignty that God is able to tell you the future before it even happens. He says here, I'm declaring the end from the beginning. God can tell you the future. He can tell you the future of what's going on in your life. He can declare the end from the beginning. He can tell you the future before it even happens. God already knows. He already knows, as I said, he already knows what's going to go on in your life tomorrow. Man, I got to trust God like that. He knows what's going to happen next week and, and down the road. He knows, so be my GPS guy. Because you already know that there's a roadblock ahead that I can't even see. Right. Hallelujah. It may look clear on I-40 right now. The traffic may be moving. I don't understand why God gave me a detour. But all I know, God saw down the road and he said there's a roadblock down the road. So sometimes we don't understand why he takes us off the interstate and put us on a back road, a country road, a road where there is no lights that we can't see sometimes. But God is taking us around the roadblock. Why? Because he knows the future. He can see some things that we can't see with you. Somebody got to give God some praise. I got to give a power to this He knows. He's sovereign. He knows. He knows we give. Yes, it may look good. We want forward. We're moving. But God can see tomorrow. Yeah. He can see the future. Because he's sovereign. And he can work all things out for our good. Because he sees the future. He knows what's going to happen to us. He's already mapping it out for us. He's already mapping our life out for us. But we just have to trust him. We just have to trust God. God is in it with us. Whatever we do, God is in it with us. Those who died a tragic death as a believer, God knew beforehand already, and he worked it out for their good. He gave them eternal life. Amen? I question sometimes, and sometimes we, 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 we make a mistake and we question God. I say, God, how can this work together for the good? I, I, I look at 9-11, and I remember 9-11, and, and when the two planes crashed into the Twin Towers in New York City, I say, oh God, how can this work together? For the good. Well, let me bring some clarification about the sovereignty of God because I don't want you to leave here confused. God is not the author of confusion. God is, God is sovereign and He is in control, but God didn't drive those planes into the Twin Towers. I want you to understand that there is a devil out here, amen? There is a devil out here that's out to do evil, that's out to do bad, but anything that happens, everything, if you're a believer, works out for you. Even if you died in the plane crash or you died in the building, you're going on to have eternal life. So it still worked out for your good. I don't understand, God, how, how you're a sovereign God. And, and, and I recall that the shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, in the church, people were worshiping God. God helped me to understand. But I had to understand that God is still sovereign. He's still in control. And somehow even that worked out for the good. They were saved and sanctified, and now they're going on to be with the Lord. Amen. Even they still win. Where is thou sting? Hallelujah. Where is thou sting? God is sovereign. He's sovereign. Even the bad things that happen, God didn't cause these bad things to happen. God, God created things for the good, the Bible says. He created things for good in life. But bad things happen in our life. But still, if you believe it and you love God, it still is working out for your good. You say, how God, how pastor can that work out for the good to the shooters that we've heard about? But they was worshiping God and they were persecuted for righteousness. Now they have a, they have a crown of glory waiting here. You remember when I told you last week in the book of Romans that the suffering of this present time cannot outweigh the glory that shall be revealed to us when we go meet the Lord? You remember when I told you that? So whatever happened, whether it's death, whether it's suffering, it can't even outweigh the glory that shall be revealed. Now, look, somebody say he's working out for our good. Somebody say God is sovereign. He 
He's working things out for our good. Job, come in, Job. Let's talk about Job just a little bit. Job understood eventually the sovereignty of God. Yes. He understood the sovereignty of God. Let's go to Job 42 and 2. He understood that, 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 that God was sovereign. Yes. He was sovereign. He understood that God was good. Yes. Just to go back, God is not the author of evil, y'all. Right. God didn't create evil. Yes, he created Lucifer, but Lucifer rebelled and God cast him out. And then he became the devil. And he is the father of evil. He is the father of evil. God didn't create evil. The Bible says that, that God created everything and declared it, and declared it good. And, and 1 John 1 and 5, not to turn there, the Bible says God is light. And in him there is no darkness. Because he is light. So, so if he's light, he cannot create evil. Because he is light. Because he's God. But let's talk about Job 7 42. Dude, he got a revelation of the sovereignty of God. He says, I know that you can do anything. And that translation, everything. And that no thought can be withhold from thee. He got a revelation. And that no thought can be withhold of thee. God even know our thoughts. He said, God, I know you can do all things. He got a revelation of the sovereignty of God, even in the midst of his sufferings with you. He said, I know God. And we know the story of Job. He lost everything. His family. He lost his kids. All the livestock. He lost everything. But he got a revelation of the sovereignty of God. He said, I know that you can do all things. And, and in New Living Translation, he said, and no one can stop you. Because you're God. And Job 13 and 15, we know what he says. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because he understood the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. There is nothing outside of his influence and authority. God has all authority. He has all influence. He is the King of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. There is no limitation with God. What does that mean that he is the King of kings? We quote a lot. And he's the Lord of lords. It means that he's absolute sovereign. And he has power over the universe. Because he's king of kings and Lord of lords. He's sovereign. And we see his glory from day to day and from night to night. When we look at the moon, we see his sovereignty. When we look at the stars, we see his sovereignty. We go to the beach and thinking we were out to have a good time. And we look at the ocean, we see his sovereignty. Because he's God. He's absolute. And he knows everything. The Bible says God is Elohim. Genesis 1 and 1 says, and he created the heavens and the earth. He's sovereign. It speaks of his sovereignty. He's Elohim, which means that he's a mighty creator. He's the creator of heavens, and he's the creator of earth. Jeremiah 32, 17 says this. And O oh God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. By thy great power, and thou stretched out arms. Is there nothing too hard for thee? You must say, God is sovereign. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing that exists is too hard for God. God created everything. Amen. Was created by God. To be exact, God is sovereign. To be exact, God is so powerful that, that the Bible says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Bible said he called those things that be not as though they were. The Bible said he spoke and it came to existence. God is sovereign that even when he speaks, do you know God can speak a word in your life that can change your life? Oh, yeah. Do you realize that? Just a word in your life that God can change your life forever. Because he's God. He's a sovereign God. And he's above all things. Colossians 1 and 16 says this. I got about three more minutes. We're going to end it up. Colossians 1 and 16 says this. For by him are all things created. That are in heaven and that are in earth. The visible and invisible, whether they be thorns or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You were even created by God and you was created for God. For his pleasure were you created. He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God and he's in control over your life. It may not look like it, but he's still in control because he's working all things out for your good. Because you love him, because you obey him, God is controlling your life. Oh, yeah. Because he's God. He's God. And I want to end with saying this. 
He's God. And, and, and we talk about the sovereignty of God. We got to talk about how, how God is omnipresent. Which means that he's sovereign, that God is everywhere. God is present in all time and all space. God is everywhere. You can't get away from God. You can't move on nowhere in the world. You can't fly to Mars. You can't fly to nowhere in space and get away from God. Because God is everywhere. He's not just over here, but he's over here. He's in you. He's over there. God is everywhere. Wherever you go, he's with you. You can't even go on vacation from God. Hallelujah. He's on vacation with you. You think you're getting away from everything, God is even there. Hallelujah. God is wherever you at. Because he is in all places. Why? Because he's omnipresent. Oh, he's sovereign. The sovereignty of God. That's why he said, I never leave you nor forsake you. I'm everywhere. And keep in mind, too, we can't hide from God. We can hide from one another. We can conceal something, but God sees everything. God is everywhere because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Everywhere we go, God is there. He's in Asia. He's in Europe. He's everywhere at the same time. When they flew to the moon and, and the first people that arrived on the moon, guess what? God was there. If they made it to Mars or Jupiter, wherever they try to go, when they get there, guess what? God is there. Hallelujah. He's omnipresent, John. He's everywhere. Why? He's sovereign. Guess what else he is? He is omnipotent. Guess what that means? He's all powerful. All strength is in his hands. The Bible says nothing that he can accomplish. Anytime you can speak and the world come into existence, man, that's powerful. How he can control the atoms and the neutrons and all that stuff and put it all together and, the, and all the stars and, and the sun and, and everything is held together and, and, and how he does all that by just speaking. Mm. He's omnipotent. He's all power. There's nothing that he can't accomplish. There's nothing he can't do. He even raised the dead back to life. Hallelujah. He defeated death. Hallelujah. He has given eternal life. That's power. He's Elohim. He's, he, he's, a, he's a powerful creator. He's Jehovah. He's, he's unchangeable. And also he's omniscient. The Bible says... He knows every thought. He has unlimited knowledge. He knows everything. God is great. And, and John 3 20 says, and he, and he knows all things. Psalms 103 19 says this The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruled over all. God is in control of everything. He is the Almighty. He's the all controlling one. He's the all ruling one. And I close with this. Whatever you're going through, whatever is in your life, your circumstances, God is in control of that. God works all things together for the good of those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Look to and say, I got to trust him. He's in control. Come on, let's stand and give God some praise. Amen. Let's stand and give God some praise. Because he is God. He is God. He is God. So I understand now. I understand. When the scripture says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Because God is sovereign. He's sovereign. The sovereignty of God. He knows all. He sees all. He knows your future. I don't even have to be concerned about my future. Because that too is in the hands of God. I just got to listen to him. And follow his GPS. Sometimes we make a little challenging on ourselves. We, God said turn right. We're going to turn left. But even in that, he's still in control. He have, you know GPS do when you get off track? What does it do? Get me right around. Sometimes it takes you longer to get there. When it was in the wilderness, all that time, they could have got there in a few days or a few weeks. A few days, I think it was. But they were stayed in there for 40 years because they didn't obey God. Now, I submit to you, God worked all things out for your good. But we got to obey. We got to follow the GPS. Because if he has to reroute us, he's going to take us around or some places we may not want to go. But he'll get us back on track. Amen.
Not a GPS say, make a U-turn and turn left. You don't miss your turn. <laughs> make a U-turn and turn left. It's trying to get you back on track. Some of you may have gotten off track in your life. Your life got off track. You made some mistakes. You done some things you shouldn't have done. But because God loves you, we're going to get into this too in, in, in moments. When God said nothing can separate me, separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. His love, his unconditional love. Because he loves you, even though you made a wrong turn, God said, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to redirect your life. I'm going to redirect your life to get you back on track to where I want you to go. Hallelujah. Some of you went through some relationships. Some of you went through some jobs. Some of you went through some bad experiences. But God rerouted your life because he is faithful to his promise in Romans 8 and 28. All things will work together for your good. You say, you say, well, Pastor, I should have went to college. I missed out of college and, and, and I didn't listen to God. But God said, he's rerouting you. He's rerouting you. He's going to get you back on track to the point where he wants you to be. Because he's working all things out there for your good. Look back over your life and see what God has brought you from. He's working it out for your good. You may not understand, but just trust him. If you trust him, and you follow him and you obey him. God is going to redirect your life and it's going to work out for you.